framework, and that's the framework that we're going to keep using throughout the course. Um, the thing is that this is not a static framework. This is going to change according to where you are in the adoption life cycle, or actually where your product is in the adoption life cycle. And sometimes it's going to change dramatically. Um, so I want to go through the adoption life cycle today and then revisit how to change everything from positioning to pricing to distribution according to the life cycle. Okay? So, uh, you know, in day one, I started with this, meaning there are uh, a lot of changes that are going to come to uh, the main frameworks depending on where the product is in the life cycle. Okay? Um, sometimes you love the customer, sometimes you ignore the customer, and so on. It's pretty interesting. So let me start with innovations. Before we even get into technology, I want to talk about innovations uh, and how innovations go through their uh, diffusion pattern. And this is the, you've probably seen this many times, this is called the adoption S-curve because it looks like an S. Um, and you have percent adoption and time. And one of the things that, so many different uh, interesting innovations from 1900 on. And what you can realize is that look, for instance, at the telephone. It took the telephone from 1900 to the 1970s, about 1970, to get to 90% of the market. That's a long adoption curve, right? Look at electricity. Electricity had a steeper curve, but it took a while. It took decades. Uh, the fridge had, you know, very steep curve from the, in the 30s, pretty much in 40s, and so on. But one thing you can realize from this map, which is the curves are getting steeper and steeper and steeper right? The, look at the internet. The internet went from zero to 90% in less than 10 years. And that meant uh, basically putting together a whole infrastructure. Now, this is in the U.S., okay? Just in the U.S. market. Layout, uh, fiber, layout, you know, basically it was the whole infrastructure in less than 10 years. Trillions of dollars in investments and so on, right? Um, so let me talk about the fusion of innovation. And the first thing that I'm going to take to, to say is this. Uh, the fusion is accelerating, which is good news and bad news. Um, it took 12 years to reach uh, for the market to reach 50 million laptops. It took seven years to reach 50 million smartphones. And it took two years to reach uh, 50 million tablets. This is hardware. Now in software, web 2.0, it takes days. I'm not talking about years, days or weeks. I mean, it took Instagram no time to achieve 50 million. It took, uh, you know, Facebook no time. It took... Uh, you know, a lot of these companies, uh, Pinterest, I mean, has been adding like millions every day. So these curves are getting steeper and steeper and steeper, which means that there is less room for mistakes. That's what it means, okay? So from the venture capital investor community, uh, you know, to them when they invest in 100 companies, which is not uncommon. Um, you know, it's statistically okay for most of these companies to fail. If you're the entrepreneur, it's not okay, right? It's not okay. And chances are 
that, you know, because of the adoption uh, life cycle getting quicker and quicker and quicker, the good news is you'll know faster <laughs> whether you fail or not, right? Uh, and I, I would say I prefer that than a slow death. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, accel it's accelerating. And this is a quote from one of the co-founders of Zynga. Who should know, right? Um, they went from zero to, you know, basically IPO and multi-billion dollar uh, valuation in, in no time, basically. So let me start with defining innovation. Um, does anyone know when and where the diffusion of innovation model was created? Anyone? A lot of people in Silicon Valley think we invented it, right? We are the center of the world, after all, in technology, right? All right. Um, in the 1940s, uh, a model was created to explain the fusion of agricultural innovations, defined as hybrid seeds, uh, fertilizers, uh, wheat spray, and whatnot in Iowa. Now, this only applied to these agricultural innovations. And what they wanted to know was, you know, why does a farmer adopt a new technology? Whether it's hybrid seeds or fertilizer, a new type of fertilizer and whatnot. And that's what they wanted to know. Um, and then in the 60s, uh, this model was uh, extended to by Everett Rogers, who has written basically the, his, his uh, uh, books. He has updated them every 10 years or so, uh, and they're basically the best books uh, about the fusion of innovation, period. Okay? Um, it's called The Fusion of Innovations by Everett Rogers. And he talks about all kinds of ideas and innovations all around the world. Um, so the way that innovation is defined is ideas, practices, or objects uh, defined as new by an individual or other unit of adoption. Now, there might be different types of units of adoption. Okay? Uh, a unit of adoption could be individuals, consumer markets, it could be organizations, whether it's uh, governments, whether it's uh, corporations. It could be villages or cities, uh, states, countries, regions. All of these could be viewed depending on the innovation as a unit of adoption. So it's all going to depend on what your point of view is, what it is that your innovation is, uh, and how you would like it to be diffused. Um, but no matter what, they all follow pretty much the same pattern. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. And when we talk about innovations, of course, we're gonna focus in the course on technology, whether it's high tech or clean tech. But in fact, there are all kinds of innovations and they're all around us whether we see it or not. Uh, social innovation, uh, you know, whether it's clean water programs, smoking reduction, and so on. Policy innovations, that's not a contradiction in terms. You know, there are policy innovations once in a while. Financial innovations, um, and you know, uh, for those of you in clean energy, you know, there are a lot is predicated on policy and on policy innovation. So one of the most interesting policy innovations, it's also a finance innovation that has come out uh, of California lately, is called Property Assessed Clean Energy, PACE. Uh, I'm just gonna publish an article about that tomorrow in, in my Forbes.com blog about how California cities so in this case, it would be California cities who would be the units of adoption. Uh, how 
California cities can meet the million solar uh, rooftop and the 12 gigawatts of, so of distributed energy by 2020 using this uh, pace innovation, right? Um, transportation innovation, electric vehicles, energy innovation, solar air conditioning, for instance, technology innovations, and so on, right? So again, all of these types of innovations uh, would follow the same adoption pattern. And, and, and so I wanted to start with a big picture just, just because. It's not just about technology. I wanted to give you a bigger overview. And in terms of innovation, there is a continuum. Um, there is radical innovation and there's incremental innovation. Uh, and it's a continuum. But if you look at the two ends, a radical innovation means that it's radical. It's you know, 10 times or more better, bigger, faster, smaller, cheaper than whatever it is uh, on the market. Okay, that's called radical innovation. Now, incremental innovation um, is an improvement on a well-defined idea or technology or product. That's the 5% improvement in router speed. That's the 10% improvement in the sharpness of television uh, and so on and so forth. So basically it's adjusting. Now, most innovation happens in here, okay? While we talk mostly about this, most innovation actually is incremental innovation. Uh, in solar, even, it's been incremental, incremental, incre for 40 years. You know, 7% per year, 10% per year, and so on. After 30, 40 years, it makes, you know, for a radical kind of breakthrough and so on. Okay? Um, so radical means that it's based on, uh, you know, something that the inventor or the entrepreneur hopes will create a new market, okay? Um, and the thing about it is that there is no usage. So if you come up with something that's radical, by definition, there is no data on the market, okay? Um, but if you come up with a, an incremental innovation, you know there is a market, 